Hello, I'm Julie Livers, a mere mortal here to tell you about the ancient Greek vases. I'm sorry we can't do this project together, and on behalf of Mrs. Tony and Mrs. Johnson, we wish you all well and hope you enjoy what we've put together for you. So for the sixth grade core classes, the last project we would have done would involve Greece, and we would have created an ancient Greek vase. We would have done so um, with using chalk pastels or colored pencils. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can do this at home. A couple of the hallmarks of the Greek vases is that they use mostly three colors, white, black, and rust. Most of them had handles and they were very ornamental but they were also functional. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about this and I'll walk you through the project today. Okay, the first thing I want you to understand is that in ancient Greek, the word Greek vase didn't refer to flowers. That's what I think of when I hear of a vase, something that you would put flowers in. These were containers that had very specific purposes. Um, and you can tell by some of the names or the shapes maybe. So for example, the hydria, one of the more common shapes, was meant to hold water, our root word. Or crater, we all know that word is a big, huge divot in the ground, more or less this shape, so that's where we've gotten the word in English. But in ancient Greece, crater meant to mix. So this is like a giant punch bowl. They would put a concentrated beverage in here and it was too strong to drink like that. So they added water and they mixed it and then it was able to be consumed. Um, there is the amphorae and the alabastron. This one is the cantharos, which was a drinking cup, but I think that we still use a lot of these same designs if you look around your house. I'm sure all of you have a picture in your house that resembles this shape of the ancient Enoki, right? You've seen a trophy like this. This Skyphos, which these are two handles, actually looks to me like an old sippy cup maybe that your younger siblings use or you used when you were young. But just looking around my house, I started to look for vase shapes. So this one doesn't have handles on it, but it really strongly resembles the amphora. And you have to look, there's a long neck here and it gets very round right away, but it is still elongated and slender, very much like this one. The hydria, on the other hand, and this is something to take note of when you're drawing, it has a short neck and gets really stocky and then tapers, which is very similar to this face shape without the handles or the foot on it, but it's got a short neck and then gets really wide. This little one I had looks like the crater. It's got a wide open mouth and a full body on it. It has handles and decorations that maybe we don't see on the sketch, but it's similar. And then last but not least, the calyx, which is a little difficult to draw on because of its skinny shape, is actually round when it's tilted. So should you choose the calyx to draw for your ancient Greek vase, you may decide to draw it in this elongated form, or you can tip it and decorate in the circle on the inside of it. So I'm guessing if you look around your house, you'll probably find many things that are the same shape. One, they're beautiful. They're nice to look at, right? They're aesthetic. We talked about that word before in Egypt, but they're also very functional. So what the Greeks would do and why I love these vases was it was a very sophisticated culture, which I'm sure you know, and they wanted to document it. So they had a form of writing, but pictures say a lot. So there were no photographs, obviously, thousands of years ago. So they would paint on the vases to document things. And three of the most common subjects were the Greek gods, Greek mythology, which you know, is their spirituality, but also it's amazingly entertaining because there are such dramatic, crazy, wild stories, right? The next would be athleticism. As I'm sure you know, the Olympics started in Greece. They started in 776 BCE, so that's almost 27,000 years ago or more, actually almost 28. So they admired the dedication and the training it took to become an athlete. The other thing you would see was sort of day-to-day -day activities. So this is a woman, if you can see it. She's holding a purse. This would actually have been a small bottle that had perfume in it and she would carry it around with her. 
We've seen vases that have um, men hunting. So there's a documentation of what day-to-day -day life was. And then the fourth thing that occurs on these vases frequently are geometric shapes or patterns. And you can see on mine, I didn't draw a person, an athlete, or a god. I simply drew patterns that appealed to me, and we'll talk about that in a second. So if you don't feel like you wanna draw a human, an animal, a god, please feel free to do the geometric patterns. One thing that's essential is that you have a Greek border on it. Borders were always on their vases. And we talked about how significant borders were in Indian art as well. So we'll see them again in Greece. What I would recommend is when you look at these basic shapes, so there were other shapes of vases, of course, but these are the most common. And I found they work really well for this project. Um, I will hold this up for a second and you can either stop this video and do a screenshot or look up vase shapes online. But I'm going to go off of this one. When you're choosing a shape that you want to draw, a vase shape, think about what your subject will be. Because the Greeks were masters at having the shape of the subject complement the vase. So, for example, here's a large amphorae, and it's narrow here and gets wide and tapers. This is Dionysus, the god of wine, who has a full beard. So the artist had his forehead here, his face, with his beard taper to match the shape of the vase. And here's a calyx from the top. And these are two shoulder, soldiers, but you also see the shield in the middle, which reinforces the circular image. So you could do a pattern around here, but you want that to match or to complement it. So if you were going to do Athena, who's long and tall and slender, you would select one of these faces because it's more in keeping with her shape. Or Zeus coming across here, uh, or Poseidon you would do more of a linear, larger space on which to draw. Okay, so that's just a couple things to keep in mind. The other thing is please, please, please choose a subject that interests you. So for example, on mine, this is a palm. This represents an ancient Greek palm. And I'm from Southern California where there are a lot of palm trees. And the minute I see one, I think of home. I also spent many, many, many days in the summer going to the beach when I was younger. So I chose the wave pattern. I used to love to play checkers with my dad and my grandfather. That was kind of our thing. So I chose a checkered pattern here. The rest of it is entirely sort of free form and what I felt like doing, what I was in the mood for. So think about that. It'll be more engaging to you. Maybe you can find one with an athlete or if you're a musician, maybe there are ancient Greek instruments that you would like to draw. So let's make it fun what you're gonna need. Here's a list, and again, you may wanna freeze frame this or do a screenshot so that you know. These are very simple things you should have around the house. I just used white printer paper. You need two pieces, a pencil, and as always, probably not a mechanical pencil, a regular pencil, please, for sketching. Um, images of the Greek vases. Uh, those are easily found online or probably even in your textbooks. Um, a ruler, masking tape, scotch tape, even a, a paper clip will work. Um, I'm going to use colored pencils, but if you have markers or you want to do paint, that's fine. A couple of black Sharpies. So I have a fine point and a thicker one, the chisel. We've used those for grease. Maybe an old newspaper or magazine because when we're using the Sharpie, we don't want it to go through on the table. Scissors, glue stick, and black paper pretty easy all right so let's get started i'm gonna try to draw in your direction a little bit so you can see and i'm looking at my vase shapes if you're anything like me i can draw really well to one side but then when i have to go make the other side match it doesn't work very well so i'm gonna fold my paper in half and you can do it vertically or you can do it horizontally if you're drawing a shorter, stockier vase. I also am right-handed, so I can draw the right more efficiently. So I'm gonna put my fold in the middle, and looking at my vase, I'm gonna do a hydria. 
The first thing I do is I come across with the top of it and there's the lip. And when I look at this, the hydria comes down a little bit, or I'll do the amphora. And I have an, come in, and I have a very elongated neck, and then it tapers out and down. And I will need to leave an area at the bottom for the foot of the vase to stand on. So it's pretty easy. Now I need to add my handles. And if I look closely at this picture, I can see that they actually blend right into the neck and affix to the body. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start right here and come in like this and then come down and have it join the body. And then right here as well. And I think that looks a little bit skinny. This is just my sketch, just like every other project we've done. So I'm gonna correct it. Now, I can't draw that very well this way. So I'm just gonna get up and move to the window to where I can see my image and just very quickly come right along here because this design is symmetric. I need them to match. Okay. All right. So now I have my base and I'm ready to start designing. All right. So I can use some of my references online, the patterns, the images, borders. I've got to do some borders. So right away, I'm going to start with my ruler and I'm going to come across the lip. That's a pretty easy area to do right here, just straight across. And then I think one at the bottom of the neck. And then because it's pretty easy, the footing down here. And then maybe another line here. All right. I can change those. I can add to them. And then I want to do that palm leaf because I like the palm trees. I know one starts right in the center, so I'm going to come right here and do that. My next one comes up like this and down, and I know I need to do one on this side as well, and so forth. All right, so we're going to, you're not going to sit and watch me do all of that. That's not very interesting. But here's my sketch. So that doesn't look so interesting. I wanted to see how it would look, so I sort of colored it in. I don't need to do each one because I'm gonna do that later with Sharpie. I decided I want a little black here. I wanted this thicker. So um, this is my sketch and we're gonna transfer this. Anything I want colored in solid black, I don't need to waste the time to do my checker pattern. This is just to remind me I need to do that and for me to sort of see. It's like proofreading. Do I really like the way that looks up there? Yeah, I do. I started to color in my handles black here. I decided I didn't like the way that looked, so don't need to erase it. I just won't transfer it. I drew some flowers in here. I have some dots in here and did my pattern up here. All of this I got online. I just looked at things. All right. So now I've sketched it out. Don't have to erase what I don't like, but I need to transfer it. You can see right here, I made these bigger. I don't like them, but I'm not erasing them. I just don't transfer them. So if you don't have carbon paper, which you probably don't at home and that's okay, you know the trick, right? You turn your artwork over and just do the graphite all over the back side, right? You can come like this. And I can see my palm right here, so I will come very heavily here where I need it, etc. the whole back, right? I think you, you guys have actually taught me this trick because I'm used to using carbon paper. Then I'm gonna turn it over. So I have my sketch here, carbon side, graphite side down on the white paper. I wanna be able to see my pattern so I know where to draw and I want white paper there for it to go on to, okay? Then 
I'm going to simply tape it together. Just a little masking tape. We've done this. If you don't have it, paper clip works fine. Don't worry about it. And then you know we've done this with every project this year. I'm going to press down fairly firmly and go over every single line that I want. I've decided I don't want these flowers, so I'm not going to do them. I'm going to come in here. I like straight lines, so I am transferring my lines with the ruler. I want this colored in black, but I'm not doing it now. I want my squares colored in black, but I'm not doing that now either. I'm going to go over every single line, including the shape of the base. Please don't forget that. So we're going to pretend I've done every line. I'm going to peek at it to be sure it transferred before I untape it. And then once I see the lines transferred, good. I can untape it and now I can start coloring. All right. So please excuse this. I was practicing. I got a little excited and colored on the wrong thing. Um, now you just have this black and white paper. So grab your colored pencils and let's get going. However, we can only use three colors, the white, black, which should be your Sharpie, and a rust color. Those were the three colors of the ancient Greek vases. Even though I have all these beautiful colors and it's so tempting, I'm gonna stick with, and I don't have a rust, so I'm gonna make it, all right? And I'm gonna start coloring. I'm cutting this out, so I don't care if I go over the lines. I will, I start with kind of my yellowy color and the Sharpie will go over everything. So I can actually just color the whole thing. Don't know what I wanna do down here yet, so I'm not gonna color it. Coming with a little bit of this yellow, going over the edges so I get my color all the way to the sides. One thing you wanna do is just like with our other projects, Keep your lines going the same direction, and I would suggest you color across. Even though you're gonna get some stripes and some variation in color, it looks more consistent. If I switch midway and start coming up and down, or I get tired and I do this, it's gonna be very obvious, and the viewer's eye is gonna to go to that and not your beautiful design. So, I don't have rest. I'm just gonna blend these, it's okay. I think it needs a little more brown in it, so I come back with the brown and work my way all the way up the vase, all right? So the reason we have these three colors and no others is the ancient Greeks were amazing, and this is one of the incredible things about the vases. Instead of using glazes, which are basically paints for ceramics, they used the clay itself. So they would shape the pot, they would fire it in a wood-burning kiln, like this, almost looks like an igloo, right? And it's incredible because it has to stay, has to increase in temperature slowly, stay at a very, very high, hot, consistent temperature for a long time, like 12 hours, and then decrease incrementally and slowly. Fires up or cools off too fast, the thing explodes. If it doesn't sustain that high temperature, the minute you pick up this heavy hydrogen full of water, the handles snap off. So the fact that they could do that without electricity, without so many of the modern conveniences we have thousands of years ago is amazing. So they fire the vase. It comes out with, and when it's firing, they allow sort of a medium amount of oxygen in and the whole vase turns rust. Then they want patterns on it. So they take the clay, which is gray, mix it with a bunch of water so it's really soupy, like paint almost, and that's called slip. They would take a paintbrush and then they would elaborately paint patterns onto the vases with the watery clay. That's gray. Put it back in this kiln, there's a kiln like this, and this time they'd either let a large amount of oxygen in, which would turn their new clay white or a low amount of oxygen, which would turn it black. So they created these incredible vases without actually using color, but with just doing it by allowing certain different amounts of oxygen into the kiln. It's incredible. So this could be a little bit long, a little bit tedious. Take a break, get up, do what an ancient Greek kid would do. Maybe uh, ride your chariot around the block, but remember your social distancing. 
So you're going to come on back. You're going to color it. We're going to pretend I've done that. I've colored it to this point. I tested my black because I was a little eager. I'm not sure what I want to do. I want rust down there. I think I want rust on the handles, so I'm going to come up here. And like everything else, just sort of play with it. See where you get. Once you do that, does it need something more? Does it need more white? Does it need more black? Right? Once you're done coloring it or you get to a certain point, please feel free to use your Sharpies. Right? Remember, you want to please, please, please put an old newspaper magazine there so we don't ruin the dining room table or the kitchen table or desk, wherever you are. And start, start using your Sharpies. I would recommend the fine point, not the ultra fine. It should come right over this, right? It'll go right over your pencils. If you're using crayon, it's too waxy, it won't. And then when you have really large, solid areas, you can use the chisel tips, right? They get a lot at one time. You get the idea. So get that done, then maybe that will tell you what you need up here. We're gonna pretend I've done all of that, and here I am, right? So um, I would suggest leaving the handles, the rust color with some design on them because if they're black and you put them on the black paper, you won't see them, right? If you're going to do an image, a human, a god, um, one of the characters from mythology, please remember to use your step-by-step -step drawing. We started with that so that you would know what, how to draw, right? So now I've done everything, I've colored it, I've done all my Sharpie, I don't care that I've gone over the edges because I'm gonna cut it out, all right? So I'm gonna just, I don't fold it, I don't want any creases in it, I'm just gonna come along and cut it out. So I'm not gonna do all of this, you guys know how that goes, but I do wanna tell you that you wanna cut out this space between the handles. And please, oh please, oh please, do not take the scissors and poke through, right? That seems like the easiest thing, um, but that's actually the easiest way to cut your finger and tear your project. So instead of that, do me a favor. Just take it and gently fold it a little bit, make a snip, and now I can get my scissors in this white space that I'm cutting away anyway and cut around the handles better. Right, so I would go ahead, of course, and cut that all the way up. Right, so we're going to remove that. Once your entire face is cut out, you're going to gently look at it. Do you want to add anything to it? You've got white space here. Could you put dots in it? That's up to you. You continually tweak it if you'd like. Once you've cut it all the way out, you're simply going to take your glue stick. You know how to do that. Come around the handles all of the edges, and then in the body of the vase as well, on that newspaper, please. And then just glue it to the black paper, right? So kind of a lot. Um, I think it has a very interesting history. I wanna show you a couple that students have done before. Um, these were left voluntarily. Here's a sketch. Here's more of a short and squatty, more of a linear, this is beautiful. Or here's someone in who did an ancient Greek woman in the tall and thin. So all of these images complement the vase shape, right? You want to remember to do that. Or this one, for example, a lot of action and color down here, but um, and less detail on the border, but the border is still beautiful and very effective. All right. So one or two more things, and I appreciate you listening to me. I'll let you get started on your project here in a minute. But a couple things I wanted to share with you. I'm always telling you that artists today, like Pixar and Disney, they're so clever, but they have to study the ancients just like you do. So if you have not yet seen the Disney movie Hercules, you have time now, and it's really great if you can see it. It's very entertaining. But you will see all these vase shapes here and the women holding the vases. These are the muses, and they actually hop off of the vase shapes. Of course, those guys wouldn't have known to draw it if they didn't study art history like you do. And then a couple years ago, well, actually 2004, the Olympics were back in Greece, and this artist wanted to do something to sort of honor it, but in a modern way. 
So we see the classic Greek, Greek vase shape, we see the right colors, we see the borders, but if we look closely, it's a guy sitting in his easy chair with a remote control in his hand, athletes are on the television, and the borders are peanuts and pretzels and soda cans, right? So it's very clever. You can do something that you enjoy. I don't want you to make a cartoon of it, but you can see where current artists get their ideas from the ancients. So here's a few simple vases that I think these colors and shapes are wonderful. These things you could do, your whole vase could be black. Kind of endless possibilities. And the last thing, I have also seen it done on an old grocery bag. You use the brown paper, right? This is a Trader Joe's Christmas grocery bag. And I just cut it out and started on it. Um, I do like it, and it looks very nice against the black, but I personally don't like all the wrinkles and crinkles in it. That's just my thing, but that's also a possibility for you if you want. You can fold it, cut it, and design it. So I hope that's um, something to give you to go on. Here again are the vase shapes. Here again is your supply list. And again, from Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Tony and myself, Mrs. Libers, we miss you guys and we hope you're all well and happy. And we'll probably see you next year as seventh graders around campus. So, avios sas, which I believe is goodbye in Greek or it's close to it. Take care. Goodbye.